CrossFit and bodybuilding is one of those things that is very controversial. And coming from a bodybuilding background, especially when I first got mentioned and first got told about CrossFit and watched a couple of videos of CrossFit, I was the biggest hater and unsupporter of CrossFit. I have watched the people doing the pull-ups wrong and they're doing like Olympic lifts and whatnot to failure. And I was just like, they're gonna overtrain, they're gonna do this, that, and uh, they're gonna get hurt. And obviously the injury rate must be high because I listen to everybody out there on social media that doesn't do CrossFit or is totally against CrossFit. And these are some big guys in the industry, you know. There's a lot of people out there that just will, will totally hate on it and they, they've never even tried it, you know. They've seen it and they've seen people get injured. But these people, like I go into favor and you get coached, you know, and if you go into a CrossFit box, and some of them, yes, they don't have as good coaching, and so people do get hurt, but it's the same as a gym, you know, a lot of the time people walk into gyms, like brand new to the gym or brand new to, to memberships, and they get hurt because they don't know the form, you know, if you don't know the form and you don't know how to, how to lift properly, then you're obviously going to get hurt, and in CrossFit, yes, there are some more, I would say, uh, complicated lifts, but that's why every CrossFit uh, class has a coach. What's nice about it now as well is a lot of people in the industry are start, starting to pick it up. Now that's not to say it's a better form of training, but I think they're just seeing that it's another way to push yourself to a limit and to just lift in another way. You know, to just mix up your bodybuilding style. And you have people like Steve Cook, one of the best men's physiques in the world, taking up CrossFit. You have Donna Lynn Bailey, Mrs. Olympia, uh, taking up CrossFit, one of the big female motivations out there. And you also have people like Ryan Terry. I remember I was speaking to him at my gym and the four weeks leading up to his first Olympia debut, he was doing CrossFit. You have people like Sadiq doing CrossFit and I think it's becoming a lot more accepted in the industry as well which is all, always nice you know because it's just another form of training but as, as long as you're getting the right sort of coaching you can't really go wrong with it. But the thing the thing is I, I love bodybuilding and I love CrossFit you know like I do them because I love them that's the reason why like I love training so why not do both? Why limit yourself to one thing? I mean, bodybuilding uh, helps with my CrossFit and my CrossFit definitely helps with my bodybuilding in terms of recovery and strength and flexibility. Now, yes, I love, I love my bodybuilding. I love going in there. I love having this picture in my head and going, oh, I need rounded delts. I need bigger traps. I want this picture in my head to turn into what my body looks like. And I like that drive. I like that path that you have to walk, uh, saying like, nobody can walk the path for you, but you can do it yourself. You know, and that's what I like about that. You do it yourself. And it's the same thing in CrossFit. It's, it's training. You, if you want to bring your times down, no one else is going to bring the times down for you. Yes, you can be pushed by the people around you doing the workouts, but ultimately, it's your mindset and your vision and your output that is going to cause your times to come down, your Olympic lifts to go up. And I just like that challenge, that constant motivation of, I need to bring my numbers down. But at the same time, I like my bodybuilding and going, well, I still want to create this physique that is aesthetically pleasing. And I think they just help each other, you know, bodybuilding, especially with my strength and my muscular kind of output endurance. And then it comes to CrossFit, where CrossFit helps my bodybuilding in terms of flexibility, in terms of overload, and in terms of recovery rate. Like my anaerobic recovery has got a lot better and that can help with the gym and help with muscles recovering post bodybuilding. Like studies have shown that. So why not include both? Because you, you can do both, you just have to be careful like not to do both every single day. But I'm going to have two or three days every week where I'm going to be doing both. And that just, that just comes down to diet, increasing the food that I'm taking on, and then also listening to my body and making sure that I'm not making mistakes of I'm, I'm getting tired and I'm going to go train twice because there's no point. You're going to end up being injured. But anyway, I'm going to do a couple of two a day years and uh, I guess this episode I'm going to take you through just a standard two a day training. Good morning crew, it's quarter past 11 in the morning. We just got a package through and uh, I ordered these off eBay. So, you know, like online I was looking at the prices and like for these what I just bought, they were like 120 quid and on eBay, I managed to buy it now for like 29 pound. So I'm just gonna open it up for you. So what I bought was like um, a pair of lifters. You know, because I've been I've been doing my legs and all kind of all of my Olympic lifts in my nanos. Now my nanos are good for just metcons and like wads where you really just have to go. You know, so I have my running trainers for when we have to do a lot of running. I have my metcons for when we have to do a lot of burpees, a lot of toes to bar, a lot of things like that. And now I bought these lifters, and you know what? I've never had a pair of lifters, so 
I don't really know what they're going to be like, but they've only been worn twice. They look like fresh out of the box, to be fair. And um, I got them for £29. So always look on eBay, and um, you never know what you can what you can pick up. So I'm, I'm super happy with this. It's not about having the best of everything, but it's about making the best of everything. That's why I'm happy all the time, I swear. They fit perfect. So today, it's uh, we're gonna go and hit shoulders. A little bit different session to what I usually do bodybuilding wise, but it's still gonna be kind of the same. And um, then we're gonna go hit CrossFit later on tonight. Back on creatine. Just for the strength gains and um, to hopefully help my performance. We'll see. I never used to be able to swallow tablets. Let's go to the gym. What is going on team? Craig Ritchie back with another commentary and this one's over a shoulder workout. And this is a little bit of a different shoulder workout. So it's a standard bodybuilding shoulder workout in terms of hitting six to 10 reps and for building maths and aesthetics. But at the same time, these lifts can be targeted towards CrossFit and helping with a lot of CrossFit lifts. Now this is a standing overhead press. It's a lot harder than a standard seating overhead press. And the good thing about this is it brings a lot of core stability and a lot of shoulder stability in. So if you do want to give it a go, do give it a go, but you may need to just go a little bit lighter. You won't be able to lift as much as when you're doing it seated. This second move is one of my favorite, favorite shoulder exercises for just developing overall shoulder aesthetics in terms of width, uh, because you hit the medial delt, but also you're hitting the rear delts as well. And the thing is with this, this is one of the best exercises for shoulder health. You're opening up and out, you're hitting that rotator cuff and you're hitting those upper traps. And your rotator cuff is absolutely like, I cannot stress how vile it is in terms of shoulder health. If that's not working properly, then you're gonna cause yourself to be impinged. And especially with people like CrossFitters, especially with a lot of overhead lifts, you can cause yourself to cause a lot of injury if you are doing too many overhead lifts and you're not targeting the rear doubts, the traps and the rotator cuff enough. We then went on to just do a standard uh, lateral raise, just building the width, leading with the elbow and leading with the little fingers, not letting your hand come any higher than your elbow and not letting your hands come in any closer than the first kind of 30 degrees because supraspinatus does that. And obviously you wanna keep the tension on the delt for as long as possible because time and tension does build muscle. We then went on to just do rear delts. Rear delts just bring, over, bring out the overall shoulder, but you need to develop those rear delts. They're gonna bring in stability to your shoulder, but also they're just gonna bring the aesthetics, which you want. And uh, to bring that kind of round cap that you see from the side. Then we just finished off with behind the neck press. Now, one thing with this guys, it was the end of the workout. You wanna stay really light with uh, behind the neck press just because it is a very, very, very vulnerable position for your shoulders. And uh, so we were hitting about 15, 20 reps on this and just keeping it nice and light and building that anterior part of the shoulder. Now, a lot of people who do uh, a lot of snatching, if you wanna get better at snatching, especially like if you're not amazing at it, this will help with just terms of getting a lockout if you don't fully extend and get the bar underneath you. So this will be kind of beneficial for building your anterior down, but also for helping you snatch out if you do do CrossFit. But anyway, that was a kind of full workout. Do hit that like button if you do enjoy this series and obviously leave us a comment and um, we'll talk to you guys later on in the video. Oh boy. You want to be a champion? You want to give it that extra 5%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dad watched the, the last video. He watches all of my videos to be fair. And um, he was like, you know what, Craig? You need to smash this one. You need to add that extra half percent. You need to add that 5%. And uh, just started ranting. <laughs> but he, he supports me, so it's always cool. Boom. 5.30 in the evening, we've just sat down for dinner. Uh, just cooked up a load of pasta, a load of veg, and a load of turkey. And uh, so we have training in two hours at 7.30. So I wanted a big carbohydrate meal in before that. Usually on days when I'm doing doubles, so double training, I up my carbs by about 100 grams. And the reason why, just because even though carbohydrates are non-essential source, it's like your body's preferred um, way of getting energy. So that's why I'm having this right now. I just love pasta. I love the carbs. <laughs> the last two days, I have been so ill. So you know that cold from the first one that I said I didn't feel too good? I then, um, it went away. And then the last two days, it just wiped me out. Like I had to listen to my body and just literally like slept and ate and just went and trained my clients. I was like, what? So um, anyway, I'll probably see you guys in the CrossFit gym. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're at CrossFit, and uh, someone asked me on one of my videos, like, what is a standard CrossFit session, you know, because obviously a lot of people don't know what it is, or, or, or like, what a standard CrossFit session is, so today, I'm going to take you through a standard CrossFit session, and uh, you start off with mobility, or like, myofascial release stuff, so I started on the ball, and just a bit of uh, warming up with the pipes. Uh, huh? Yeah. Then we go on to either a strength or a technique part. The strength part today was uh, three pull-ups with just a max weight underneath, so I managed 35, and then you just go max underhand grip pull-ups. So it's like standard bodybuilding stuff, strength stuff, um, and we did that for four rounds. He's just about to tell us the wad, and that'll be our kind of like workout. I think he'll end up put me on the floor. <laughs> okay, so the workout is tonight 21 toes to bar, 21 bar per touch burpees, 50 double unders. Then you do 15 of each, 50 double unders, 9 of each, 50 double unders. So uh, this one is gonna hurt, it's very gassy. I'm gonna be dead by the end of it. <laughs> I, you know, when that comes up and you're just like, oh, yeah, I have that feeling. Having so much pain. Oh my god. The toast to bar in the second round I couldn't do. I did it in seven minutes and 52 seconds. Oh my god. god I'm in so much pain. Uh, my abs. I feel good though. Uh, my forearms and my abs and my lungs. Oh. It's that time of the evening, it's quarter past nine at night. And um, I made this earlier, right? So it's a protein pudding with banana. It's like incredible, it's the nicest thing ever. I run out of oats, so I just haven't got any oats. Uh, 35 days out, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like today like, was a turning point and now I've just got that extra fire in me to like kill workouts. I need to get quicker, I need to get stronger, I need to get faster and I'm just doing it. But I'm like ready like to just smash it, like I'm just so ready. And uh, I feel like this series even though like it's kind of given it given something to you guys i feel like it's given more to me and fueling me more to like prove to you guys that we can do it and just prove to just whoever else that we can smash it but anyway we're gonna sit down eat this i'm gonna end the vlog here that is episode three of road to the open if you didn't check episode two full day of eating go check it out and um obviously hit that that like button and team i'm gonna do this for you i'm gonna try my hardest to just smash every workout and give it 100 percent and um, we'll catch you guys in the next one.